Howdy folks, welcome to the 14th episode in this series on computational linear algebra, where we are going to discuss fitting exponentials with least squares. So previously, in episodes 11 and 12, we discussed line fitting, which is really just a first order polynomial, so we discussed fitting higher order polynomials. And we saw that fitting higher order polynomials can be useful because we can test and see which order polynomial model best fits or best represents our data. But here you can see we clearly have exponential data. So we should choose the most appropriate model. And that would be, in theory, an exponential model. And keep in mind that this video is going to, is going to show you how we can fit an exponential but you could use the same principles in this to choose other functions or other models that you might want to fit to a different data set. Now recall that for a polynomial fitting, we set up a linear system that looked a little bit like this. We had a van der Vaughan matrix as our A matrix. We stuck all the coefficients of our polynomial into our X vector. And we stuck all our Y data into our B vector here. In our van der Vaughan matrix, we have x to the 0 running down the first column, x to the first power running down the second, x squared down the third, and so on and so forth, depending on what order polynomial we are actually trying to fit. And we can use this same general procedure to fit an exponential. The problem is here that our exponential clearly does not fit in the same pattern of the polynomial, where we can go ahead and use the van der Vaughan matrix. But we can manipulate this to get it into a form where we can use that van der Vaughan matrix. We can simply just take the natural log of both sides of our equation here and see now that we get something that looks like a polynomial. Here we have our x to the first power term. Here we have our x to the zero term. So we can construct the following linear system. We have a simple two column van der Vaughan matrix with ones or x to the zero down the first column, our x data running down the second column. Our coefficients change now so that we have the natural log of C and alpha in our x vector. And then we're taking the natural log of each one of our y coordinates that are still being placed in our B vector. Now, unless you have two data points, you're going to have an overdetermined system. So you're going to need to use the method of least squares. And so remember that when we do that, we're taking a transpose and left multiplying that with both sides of our system. Then we're solving that system, which is going to give us an x vector with the natural log of c and alpha. But remember, we're considering that to be an approximation to our original linear system. But with this, we need to remember to re-exponentiate that first value in our x vector. And so now we get to coding all this up. We're still just using NumPy. And of course, you can find this code at the GitHub link in the description down below. We have two functions here, uh, exp fit and exponent. We'll first focus on this exponent function, which is pretty simple. It accepts some x data, uh, our uh, c coefficient, which I'm calling const here, and our alpha coefficient. Then move into our exponential fit function. It accepts x data and y data. We're taking that y data and taking the natural log of all of it right away, setting that equal to our b variable here. We're generating our A matrix using the numpy ones function, so we don't have to change any of the values of the first column of our matrix. Then we're sliding all of our X data into that second column of our A matrix. We're using the numpy linalg least squares function, which is going to perform our least squares approximation. We're passing in our A matrix and B vector transposed, because remember, uh, otherwise it's going to see that B vector as a row vector rather than a column vector. The first value that the least squares function gives us is our x vector or our approximation. Then we are re-exponentiating that first value of our x vector. And because this is an approximation, we need to have a vector norm to go along with this x vector. So we're using the two norm here and we're returning that back to us. Then you can see uh, I have a plotting function here, but that's not the point of this video. So we're not going to cover it, but you can, of course, go ahead and check it out. Right here in main, you can see that we are generating our domain, which is going to be our x coordinates. We're plugging that into our exponent function to generate our y coordinates with a c coefficient of 3 and an alpha coefficient of minus 0 0.23. I'm not adding in any noise into this, so we should get a perfect fit out. Then we're calling our exponential fitting function, passing in our domain or our x data and our generated exponential data. Then we're printing out all of our coefficients to the terminal. 
We're also printing out our norm and then we're plotting everything. And this is the result that we end up getting just visually looking at our exponential fit. It looks pretty much perfect as we would have expected. And when we examine our coefficients, the C0 coefficient, which corresponds to our C coefficient, is 2.9 repeating. Originally, it was a value of 3. And uh, depending on whatever your circumstances, you can establish a criteria to determine whether or not you're going to do some rounding or not. But in this case, I think it would be appropriate to round. So that's effectively 3 in my book. The C1 coefficient right here corresponds to our alpha coefficient, which is minus 0 0.23 with a bunch of zeros and a 4. Again, we can pretty much consider that to be floating point arithmetic error. So we can go ahead and do some rounding. And our norm is on order of 10 to the negative 15. And so again, you can establish your own criteria for whether or not you are going to start rounding stuff. But in my book, something on order of 10 to the negative 15 is effectively zero. So we can round that to be zero and say that we have a perfect fit here, providing we round our coefficients. Now, some of you might say, why don't you just set your axes to be law on a logarithmic scale? And that's effectively what we're doing here. With everything that we've done here, you can see that by taking the natural log of both sides of our function, we're setting stuff to a logarithmic scale. But the point in showing you this is that if you choose a different function and you manipulate it such that it will fit in a van der Van matrix style linear system, that there is going to be certain things you're going to need to account for. In this case, it is our C coefficient and the fact that that C coefficient is now the natural log of C and we needed to re-exponentiate it. But folks, that is exponential fitting and even more so that is just uh, general fitting with linear least squares. There's non-linear least squares, which we may cover at some point in time. But the whole point of me showing you the line fitting, polynomial fitting, and now this exponential fitting is to show you just how useful the method of least squares actually is to real world applications. Depending on what data set you're working with and the model that you're working with, you can get some really useful real world information out of data using the method of least squares. And it's ultimately one of the simplest, if not the simplest and most elementary forms of machine learning. If you're interested in going a bit more into the weeds with the machine learning side of this stuff, I'll encourage you to check out a number of other fantastic videos here on the internet on the topic of regression as you can go much farther into the weeds with a lot of this. So folks, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, do not hesitate to let me know. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.